system. Those who believe in Obia and acknowledge the ranking. Fornicators and adulterers and those who blaspheme against the name of the most high job. Remember repentance time, my friend. Missing once again. It is written, Beulah's time, them shall come. Can't you see nations rising up against nation? Children disobedient unto them parents. Who not eat the bread and the wicked drink the wine of violence? Every day, man, Christ, so devote them invention. How them invented it for the rich of population. Now them can't find a cure the whole of them Satan. Man a clone monkey, no man a clone human. Sorry, last days, wicked people want to change the ways. Repent and give master that fruit. So compare to John in the night or any time of day. My, my love. Again, this for the last days, wicked people want to change the ways. Repent and give master that fruit. So compare Watching CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados. Layoffs at Scotia Bank, a call to get rid of mosquitoes before the wet season. And in sports, Lester Vaughan and St. Michael take day one honors in the Frank Blackman zone at BSAC. Credible, balanced, committed. This is the CBC Evening News. Very good evening. I'm Lisa Broom with the CBC Evening News. In our top story tonight, one of this island's leading commercial banks has sent home 26 of its workers. Marketing manager of Scotia Bank, Amanda... Scotiabank will be restructuring its support functions, which will result in operating efficiencies and streamlined processes and controls. She says the, the priority for Scotiabank is to be better organized to serve its customers as it takes action to remain competitive in serving its clients. She says Scotia didn't make the decision likely, noting that it has a long history of dealing with employees fairly and with respect. For some employees, this will mean that their position will be transitioned to different reporting lines. For the others whose positions have been eliminated, the bank is committed to working with each of them to identify other opportunities where possible within the organization. 26 people in Barbados have been affected by this development, and there will be a few others in the Eastern Caribbean. Over the next three months, we will look for opportunities to place the affected employees where possible, and therefore it is still too early to confirm the actual number who will be leaving the bank. These are back office processing functions, so these, this does not apply to branches. The mosquito population must be eradicated before the wet season comes in. The advice from head of the UE Regional Task Force on Zika, Professor Clive Landis. He made the comments during a press conference to outline the mandate and work of the task force this morning. Lisa Lord has the details. Professor Landis says the best time to eradicate the mosquito population is now during the dry season, before the wet season starts on June 1st. He also says eradicating the mosquito will lessen the incidence of the Zika virus. Professor Landis disclosed that the insects are not just found where water settles, but below the surface as well. It is present in septic tanks, it's present in storm drains, it's present in um, pit latrines, and this is a change in behavior which mandates a change in mosquito eradication strategy. The WHO yesterday reported after a three-day meeting in Geneva that it felt the current mosquito eradication strategies utilized in the world are not having an effect to uh, the evidence is not there that they are adequately suppressing dengue. And anything 
that's true for dengue, which has been around for many years, is going to be true for Zika because it's carried by the same mosquito. Then asked why UWE found it necessary to establish a task force to tackle Zika and not chikungunya and dengue, Professor Landis pointed out that the virus has more severe medical complications. The connection with microcephaly and wider fetal abnormalities is truly worrying. And I think this is what has motivated the WHO to um, announce this uh, public health emergency of international concern. The WHO did, did no such thing for chikungunya, and that is um, because chikungunya did not have those very serious um, clinical manifestations. Vice Chancellor Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, who conceptualized the task force, described the virus as a public health catastrophe awaiting us. He gave the assurance that the university is prepared to lend all of its expertise. We are a little ahead of it, so hopefully uh, with this project and its relationship to all of the public health initiatives in, in the region across the Caribbean, uh, we can minimize the impact of this, and, and as I've said earlier, uh, uh, build, build resilience. Since launching a month ago, the task force has raised thousands of dollars to fund its research. Lisa Lord, CBC News. Service-based economies in the region like Barbados have been most affected by impacts on the regional financial system compared to commodity-based economies. This is one of the findings coming out of the just-released Regional Financial Stability Report. Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Barbados, Cleveston Haynes, made the observation as he referenced different aspects of the report during its launch. The commodity-based economies have done relatively well. Uh, whether or not that continues in the foreseeable future um, is a little in question because right now commodity prices themselves are, are, are falling and we may see some reversal of this trend in terms of the relative performance of commodity versus service-based economies. Mr. Haynes also says challenges to global commodity prices could have an impact on the region's commodity-based economies. Meanwhile, he adds, while indebtedness continues to be a key challenge for regional economies in general, ongoing efforts to reverse the situation are bearing fruit. As you can see, all of these what we would call primary macroeconomic uh, indicators are going in the direction in which we would not want to see them go. Although it is true that what is happening is that because of the fiscal uh, imbalance and the high level of indebtedness, countries have been focused on reducing uh, their fiscal deficits. And what we are seeing therefore is that fiscal deficits are now moving uh, in the right direction. An event producer believes Barbados's festival industry is economically ripe for the picking. Adisa Aja Anduele, who's worked with several local events and festivals within and outside of the crop over season, sees major potential in the cultural sector. Working once again with the Holders Festival now in its 23rd year, Mr. Anduele says the entire tourist industry stands to benefit if government invests in festivals. He says successful festivals significantly increased local hotel bookings, car rentals and entertainer bookings, as well as promote, promoted artistic development and the island as a cultural destination. He's encouraging urgent investment since he believes youth musical talent is at its peak thank to, thanks to music programs like the ones at the Barbados Community College. I don't think that Barbados ever had such a cadre of young talented musicians that they're seeing today, all because of the music program at the BCC. I mean, it, it's just tremendous, right, you know? And it's tremendous for Barbados that we, we have so many arts festivals, entertainment festivals, like the holiday season and, and all the festivals need every month, which align creating the space and the opportunities for these musicians and artists to perform and, and, and make a living to some extent. The popular Holders season starts this Friday at the Holders Garden Theatre in St. James and runs until next Friday. Artistic director of the festival, Stuart Collins, says the lineup includes international Grammy-nominated artists and prestigious local musicians who will showcase a range of performances. 
we start off with cabaret, then we continue with jazz, then we go on to classical music, then we have comedy, then we have theatre, and then we end up the whole thing with a mixture of opera, a little bit of circus, and a little bit of, of pan. Of course, we finish with Steel Pan and the great Ziggy Walcott and some superstar musicians. The last 50 years of life in Barbados have been captured and published in a book launched recently by a Barbadian author and former CBC employee. It's Barbados in Review, written by William Anderson Gittins. Before signing copies for several people who purchased the book, he gave some insight in how it came about. According to him, the idea was formulated while at the CBC in 2003, waiting to be interviewed about some of his writings. Sitting, pondering many things, the thought came to me, why don't you create a text followed by the team Barbados in Review. So on leaving CBC after the interview, I started to put things in place by collating information and pursuing this text very vigorously. So it took me approximately 13 years to compile this data. Consultant Ricardo Jordan provided a preview of the book. He says it's significant that Mr. Gittins has captured the last five decades of Barbados in 365 pages. He has basically sought to frame 50 plus years of Barbadian culture in a year of pages, 365. A year of pages, which tell the stories of independence, of our national heroes and our habits of the past, and indeed show a vision for the future of this young, developing nation, which he obviously loves. We'll have more news in just a moment. Stay with us. Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% Fiber to the Home Network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, play back from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet. Call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One-of-a-kind connection. This is how we flow. Barbadians will kill you for their decorative plants. I mean, they'll come into my yard and break off my plants. But trees, no. You see home after home. You see public spaces. You see car parks concreted over. You see gardens concreted over. Because people say, I don't want the trouble of having to deal with any form of plant life. Give me concrete. Trees of the silent sentinels, Sunday at 7.30 p.m., repeated on Saturday at 6 p.m. Trees of the silent sentinels. The right time to get in shape is now. No need to do without a delicious treat. Enjoy Bico's low-fat, no-sugar-added Diabetics Delight ice cream. Available in vanilla, chocolate, mango, and strawberry flavors. Now on special for just $15.99, fat inclusive. Available from participating outlets island-wide. Bico Mobilers and the Bico Direct Outlet Harbor Road. Time to get in shape with Bico Diabetics Delight. A lot of people think that fast clothes are cool, and the girls show like the guys who write them. But, like so many things about life, you gotta be careful. Having sex without a condom is like wearing a bike without a helmet. It's just plain dumb. It's okay to have fun, as long as you're smart about it. My name is Daniel the Lion Fortress, and I'm different, and I'm making a difference. Live up, love, protect, respect. Creating a society that could appreciate art in all of its forms was a goal of former Prime Minister Sir Lloyd Erskine Sandiford. He made the revelation at the Caribbean Fine Art Fair. It came after he was presented with an award of excellence for his tremendous contribution to the development of the arts, culture and education in Barbados and the Caribbean. Sir Lloyd says one of his objectives when he became Education Minister in 1967 was to focus on art education. 
He says that was reflected in the Barbados Community College, which he is credited with establishing. There was a little ferry, rather like the boats in Venice, ferrying people from uh, the, the park area down at the corner behind the Carlisle House or from any, the end of the uh, Lewis Wickham boardwalk across the Carinage. We apologize for that incorrect extract. Well, the Caribbean Fine Arts Fair has brought together more than 51 artists from 15 Caribbean countries, as well as America, Ghana, and Brazil. It's being held at Divi South Winds. It started yesterday and runs until Sunday, March 13th. In other news now, Senator Professor Henry Fraser believes Barbados is missing out on opportunities that could be provided by the careenage. He suggests the waterway has much untapped potential that, if properly used, could bring significant benefits. Perhaps if there was a little ferry, rather like the boats in Venice, ferrying people from uh, the, the park area down at the corner behind the Carlisle House or from any, the end of the uh, Lewis Wickham boardwalk across the Carinage to the waterfront area and the shops on the waterfront. This kind of ferry between the two sides of the Carinage would be a tremendous tourist attraction, which I think many of our visitors would enjoy and many Bayesians would enjoy, and then they would not have as has been said earlier today, to get in their car on one side of the careenage and drive and find a parking space on the other side of the careenage. Sir Henry was speaking on a resolution in the Senate yesterday to vest land at Church Village in the city in the Central Bank of Barbados. And in his contribution, Independent Senator Dr. Sir Trevor Carmichael highlighted the importance of the Central Bank in the development of Barbados. He says the resolution is connected with the issue of development and the lands are being vested in...